Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2012 Korean action thriller movie, called A Company Man. This movie tells the story of a hitman who falls in love with a single mother. This fateful encounter leads him to quitting his job as a killer. However, he finds himself targeted by his ex-colleagues due to the decision. So, how can he fall in love with the single mother? Will he survive being hunted down by his friends? Let's find out. The story begins with Hyungdo and his younger colleague, Junior, waiting in a car for the right time to infiltrate a building to assassinate their target. Junior disguises as a delivery man, successfully passing the security guards. Junior takes the elevator, his hands holding a cardboard box. He eventually reaches the designated floor, gaining the attention of the target and his lackeys. Junior keeps his cool as he is being questioned, then shoots from inside the cardboard box with his pistol, killing two of the lackeys easily. The guards try to close the door to protect the target, but Junior manages to shoot one of the guards, keeping the door open. Junior runs inside, shooting the other guard right away. The guard tries to shoot Junior but misses, shooting the lights instead. The corridor is now dark, the lights flickering. Junior appears in front of the last lackey, shooting through the heart. The target is helplessly trying to get a phone call, but Junior finishes him off before he could do anything. The job is done. As Junior walks to the stairs, Hyongdo suddenly appears and twists his neck, causing him to fall onto the stairs. Hyongdo apologizes to the limp Junior. As he grabs his head, Junior asks Hyongdo for one last favor. Afterwards, Yongdo flees the scene as the police start to arrive. He returns to his company to give his report regarding his mission. The next morning, he stops by his senior's house to talk about Junior's last favor. His senior is surprised to hear this, since Yongdo is usually straightforward in his missions, obeying any orders given to him. Maybe he's had a change of heart. Afterwards, Yongdo visits Junior's family at their home. He explains to Junior's sister and mother, Yu, that Junior is working well at his company and is on a business trip abroad and hands over a bag full of cash to Yu, without mentioning the real nature of their jobs. They bring Hyongdo inside to have some tea together and talk more. It turns out Yu used to be a singer when she was young. As her daughter plays one of her songs in the house, Hyongdo has a flashback. Hyongdo had heard this song before, and it was revealed that he used to listen to her songs all the time when he was still in school and doing his part-time job. He even takes one of her cassette tapes and brings it back home to listen to it. The next morning, the chairman calls Hyongdo to the company for an urgent briefing. He is instructed to keep an eye on his former boss, Director Jin. His son was caught in an accident which took his life, leaving Jin full of sorrow. Hyongdo accepts the mission, tailing Jin but loses focus because of posters of you in the alleyways, distracting him from his job. This causes him to eventually get caught by Jin. He tells him to inform the company that he wants to quit, finished off with a hit to the back of Hyongdo's neck. Hyongdo returns to the company to get his wound treated and reports on his mission. He can only apologize to his boss for his failure on the job. After the report, Yongdo receives a call from Junior, who he actually had spared and hid in a restaurant. He pays the injured youngster a visit. He explains to Junior that he was just a temp. The boss wanted to get rid of him, even though Yongdo wanted him to get a more permanent position. He had a change of heart and decided to spare Junior, disobeying the company. After another job, Yongdo parts ways with his assistants, telling them to go back first. Afterwards, he meets Junior's family together with Junior, having lunch together and apologizes for the accident that has happened to Junior, since he's still wearing a neck brace. Night falls and Yu thanks Yongdo for taking good care of Junior. She also explains that it has been a while since their family had a good time together, especially Junior and his sister. Things quickly turn south though, because of a text message for Yongdo. He has been instructed to eliminate Director Jin. He calls his boss to ask who gave the approval, but is scolded in return and ordered to finish the job. Afterwards, Yongdo pays Jin a visit at an internet cafe. Jin looks miserable. An empty husk of his former self. A fight quickly breaks out between the two, Yongdo successfully evading Jin's punches, while also countering him and landing hits upon hits onto Jin's body and face. Jin keeps fighting back, but Yongdo is too much for him to handle. 
he throws him to the corner of the room and points a gun to Jin's head. Yongdo tells Jin that he could have run from this, but Jin has already accepted his fate, telling him that he has nothing in his life anymore since his son's death. Yongdo finally shoots the bullet, finishing him off. The next morning, the company has an outing together in celebration of Yongdo's promotion, becoming a director after Jin has been eliminated. Afterwards, Yongdo goes on a date with Yu to a cafe by the lake, which is run by Yu's mother. Yongdo finally confesses that he has listened to Yu Song since he was young, which flatters Yu. They return to Yu's home at night, but the police are there, trying to look for Junior as they try to solve the case. One of the police recognizes Yongdo from the scene and asks for his identification. Yu, annoyed at his questions, hands him Yongdo's business card to shut him up, but this also raises suspicions regarding his company. Meanwhile, Jin has been spotted visiting his son's columbarium, which reveals to the company that Hyongdo has failed his job once again, sparing Jin's life. The next day, Hyongdo is called to the company once again, with Jin surrounded by his colleagues. Hyongdo is then told to finish the job, but once again fails to do so. He chokes Jin with a string, but releases him before he dies. His colleagues finally finish his job for him. Afterwards, the police pays the company and Hyongdo a visit, but finds that it's just an ordinary company. After all, the darker secrets are hidden at the back. Hyongdo starts to lose motivation on his job, even going as far as abandoning his assistant's mid-job, leaving the scene and ignoring instructions. Hyongdo realizes that he won't achieve anything meaningful, and Yu will also be furious if she finds out the truth. He decides to go on a date with Yu, having dinner together and confessing his feelings. In return, Yu gives him a handmade bag. Also, Yongdo wants to give her the money to buy her mother's cafe, which she happily accepts. The two of them enjoy their time together, and Yongdo also starts considering resigning from his job. However, the company starts thinking of terminating Yongdo. They also know about his relationship with Yu's family. The next day, Yongdo and his assistants drive to a meeting. On the way, his assistants start acting suspicious, driving quite slowly on the highway and picking an unconventional route. He realizes what their intentions are, to eliminate him as the company orders. A fight between him and his assistants breaks out, Yongdo evading his gunshots and making quick work of one of the assistants. The car stops and the fight continues with the other assistant, Yongdo skillfully redirecting her gunshots away from him. She changes her weapon to a knife, but Hyongdo continues to evade her attacks and takes the fight out of the car. He asks her to stop, but she refuses. Hyongdo uses his tie to choke her neck, but she retaliates, making a cut on his leg. But his physical strength is just too much. As Hyongdo throws her to the middle of the road, a car finishes her off by running her over. He immediately gives Junior a call right after, telling him that the company knows about his family. He takes them to the streets, Yongdo arriving shortly after to pick them up and take them to his senior's house. Yu demands an explanation, and Yongdo finally tells her all the secrets. The next day, Yongdo goes back to his residence undercover to take his cash to flee the city. He manages to slip by all the guards that are keeping an eye out for him and brings his bag of cash to senior's house. But once he returns, senior has betrayed him, keeping Yu's family hostage surrounded by guards. Senior wants to return to the company, and this is his ticket back. Yongdo begs him to let Yu's family go, but he refuses, Senior hitting him with the gun's grip. He lays on the floor to regain his composure, before taking out his knife to cut a guard's leg. He gets up on his feet and steals the guard's gun as he throws his knife to another guard's head. Yongdo manages to land the bullets onto the guards, but Senior starts to fight back. Yongdo uses a guard's body as a shield from Senior's gun, and finally manages to finish off Senior. The dust settles. He turns to see Yu's children safe, but Yu was caught in the crossfire, taking a bullet on her stomach, killing her. The next morning, Yongdo prepares himself, wearing a bulletproof vest on his body and drives back to the company. They are already prepared, however. Every member has been given a gun to eliminate Yongdo. He enters the company and looks for the chairman, asking the receptionist. She tries to shoot him, but he pulls the trigger quicker, shooting a hole through her chest. Afterwards, he enters the office, receiving stares from every person in the room. They take out their guns as well, and a gunfight breaks out between Hyongdo alone against all his colleagues. 
miraculously, Yongda wins the fight, eliminating every person in the room. It wasn't clean however, with Hyongdo taking a few bullets here and there. Afterwards, he calls the police to come to the company. Hyongdo goes through the secret door to meet his higher-ups. A woman takes out a shotgun and tries to shoot him, but he pulls the trigger faster, shooting a bullet through her head in an instant. Another man ambushes him, stabbing Hyongdo on the back. He manages to keep calm however, evading his knife and attacks. Yongdo rolls up a calendar and uses it as a weapon, landing hard smacks onto the man. The man manages to stab Yongdo on his chest, but is protected by the vest. Yongdo throws him away from him, finishing him off using the shotgun. He continues his rampage, going to the chairman and takes care of his guard quickly. Just as the chairman is going to shoot Yongdo, a bullet pierces through his head. It was Junior, shooting him from behind Yongdo. As the police rush to the scene, Yongdo tells Junior to get changed and take the stairs. Suddenly, a figure appears from behind and shoots Junior on the leg, and also shoots Yongdo on the chest. It was his boss. As Yongdo tries to get up, boss shoots him once more. Yongdo clings onto boss's body and starts receiving punches onto his head. However, Yongdo manages to steal boss's string and turn things around, coiling the string around his neck. But Hyongdo's energy is running out, with Boss managing to break free of the chokehold. Boss runs towards Hyongdo to finish him off, but he manages to grab and throw Boss out of the window, falling from high up towards the ground. In the end, the police arrive at the scene and Hyongdo turns himself in, blood all over his body. His decoy works out, letting Junior escape the scene without getting caught by the police. Hyongdo then has a flashback to when he was on the train, on his way to the company to apply for the job. He was nervous about his application letter, and decided to take a better picture of himself. He went to a nearby photo booth and retook a better photo for his document. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.